Thanks for tuning in to this latest video briefing that will cover the extremes of 2018-19. This is Alex Tardy, meteorologist with National Weather Service. All right, what a difference a year makes, right? Uh, here is a satellite view on the left-hand side showing March 14th, 2019, and then on the right-hand side showing 2018. Now take a look at this set of satellite imagery comparing 2019 and 18 in March. Almost no snow on the right hand side and notice most areas are brown with very little green up. On the left hand side take a look at what we find. Many areas that are green and widespread green with more snow and the flowers, the poppy fields north of Lake Elsinore also show up as orange. We've seen some precipitation across this region that is complete opposite of what we saw a year ago. On the left hand side are photos taken back in the very dry, record dry 2017-18 and on the right hand side the current year 2018-19. Percent of normal is what's shown here. You can see it stands out very well across Southern California. The blue shaded areas are 130 to 175% of normal. Even some of our mountain locations close to 200% of normal or two times the average precipitation during the water year through March 23rd. What happened this year? We had a lot of atmospheric rivers and a lot of them were pointed across Central and Northern California and a few took aim at Southern California as shown here. Very active year specifically these are showing the tracks of atmospheric rivers. All right across San Diego let's take a look of how the years compare. No comparison to last year. This year we're looking at weak El Nino conditions and you can see over the past 10 years some of our wettest years have actually been in La Nina years as shown here and not necessarily El Nino. How about the Big Bear region? So this year is shaping up to be top 10 wettest with still a couple months ago where we could see significant precipitation. Hard to beat 1968-69 is showing up in first place. 2010-11 you can see we're very close to that value now. How about Palomar Mountain, another wet location in San Diego County and you can see we are still shy of 2010-11 and 16-17, well shy of 2004-2005. But nonetheless, 2018-19 is now showing up near the top 15. Precipitation is a big component to how green and how many flowers are around across the region and the recovery to the drought. You can see in San Diego, we're running about three inches above normal. And we've made up deficits going all the way back to about six years. Other parts of Southern California still has significant deficits, however, as shown here. Though we have made some big progress, including areas like Palomar Mountain and major progress across Big Bear region. Speaking of Big Bear and Palomar Mountain, you can see February those end up being one of the wettest Februarys on record for Big Bear and Palomar Mountain. All right, here's what it looks like through early March, and we're starting off very wet for this water year. We're on pace to some of the wettest years on record, but still falling shy. You can see last year, 2017-18, well below average. Across the United States, you can see the rankings shown here. California is one of the wettest years, but the wettest conditions by far have been to our east over the Tennessee Valley. Now, in particular, we had some major storms affect our region in February 2019, as shown in these photos here. This storm damage is still being repaired across the Riverside County Mountains. Here's an example of some of the ongoing repairs, as shown in March major work being done on Highway 243 which is not even accessible and limited accessibility on Highway 74. We were allowed to tour that area and here are some photos from that region. The water flow from the February storm was remarkable. Five to ten inches of rain in about 24 hours and the debris field here 
is shown and you can see the scars on the trees that are alive and dead as water ripped through this part of the mountains. Besides just the wet precipitation season so far, 2019 is also starting off very cold. In fact, February 2019 average temperatures are shown here and you can see all across the west it was below normal and most of California top 10%. So very cold. Some locations in Southern California, even the coldest on record for any February. Take a look at the statistics here from San Diego. We can see it's been a long time since we've had cold months. For the winter time, you have to go all the way back to 2013 before you see temperatures that were below normal in the month of January and February. Some of the warmest months in the past 10 years are shown in red. And February here ranks almost two degrees below normal. Now, this has also helped with the green up and the super bloom that you're hearing about. The cool temperatures, or in some cases, cold temperatures in January and February, along with the precipitation, has allowed for extensive germination and the resultant super bloom, as shown here. It was also cold. Those areas recorded some of the coldest temperatures they've seen any month, including February. In Palomar Mountain, it came in second place and first place for areas such as Ramona, as shown here below. All right, the snowpack, well, that's also improved greatly due to the precipitation and the cold air, the combination of the two. And we're looking at conditions across the Sierra Nevada, as shown here. In that thick blue line, about 150% of April's average, doing very well with snowpack and very much comparable to the snow years of 2010, 11, and 16, 17, but falling shy of the record snow year 82, 83. Here are some examples of snowfall across the region that's been significant, if not major. Now, across the Sierra Nevada, this is a measure of precipitation. And you can see running much above normal, the normal shade or the average 30 year average is the blue shade. And you can see we're just shy of 97, 98 and considerably shy of the two wettest years, 16, 17 and 82, 83. But running much above what we saw last year. Water supply has benefited from that, and we now see reservoir levels that are above the historical average. The blue on the left-hand side above the red line. We also see significant precipitation, about 150% of average, across the Colorado River Basin, where those reservoirs remain critically low, but we do see some improvements, such as Lake Mead. Now across Southern California, we also see big improvement we see smaller reservoirs such as Lake Paris making major progress, nearly full. And in San Diego County, one of our largest reservoirs, San Vicente, is also about three quarters full. And speaking of local reservoirs, take a look at Big Bear Lake. After last year's record dry year and limited snowfall, it was almost 20 feet below where it should be to be considered a full lake. We've made some big progress, gaining about eight feet alone from January to March, thanks to significant rain and the snow runoff. The drought has improved, and this is the first time since 2011 that we now see no level one or D1 moderate drought. We only have some small areas of normally dry, and we talked about why that is in Southern California, as shown here. What happened during the winter of 2019? Well, if you look at the period from February through March, it's very clear that dominant low pressure system or trough of low pressure, the storm track right through the heart of California, bringing not only precipitation, but very cold conditions. We also had a little branch of subtropical energy that came up from the Southwest. Now, when we look at the entire winter, we can see the Pacific jet stream while it was in its normal position for the most part, it was shifted a little bit to the south. That large anomalous warm area indicates that happening. The cold area 
was focused again on Northern California and that was the prevailing storm track. We also had a little bit of an enhanced storm track coming out of the south, the two merging and especially as they got to our east across the Tennessee Valley where you saw earlier conditions have been even wetter than California. Can we blame it or give credit to El Nino? Well, we saw El Nino forming in the fall of 2018 as shown here. Now, the most recent satellite imagery indicates that El Nino continues, at least a week El Nino continues along the equatorial Pacific Ocean. But a lot of areas in the Pacific remain warm or much above normal as shown in the orange and red shaded areas. Now, in summary, we can give some credit because it appears that classic El Nino conditions where we see warm along the equator and we see unusual thunderstorms along the equator, unusual westerly winds along the equator have developed. So we can only give maybe partial credit to the developing El Nino conditions. All right, what's the outlook for the spring then? With El Nino in place, it looks like the outlook is for a weather pattern to continue active, but not necessarily for Southern California for the beginning of April. Looks like we'll have some warm above average temperatures and only light precipitation with the main storm track going across the Great Basin region as shown in the darker green. Now as we get deeper into April, it looks like the active weather pattern could continue with cooler conditions across the Great Basin and Desert Southwest and also wetter over the Great Basin area. And that could extend all the way into the southeastern United States as shown here in the longer range outlook. Here's the summary of what we talked about. 2018-19 was a wet season opposite of 2017-18. Extreme opposites in some case. While 2019 was not record wet, it was comparable to some of our recent wet years such as 1617, 11 and 2004-2005. We were basically 125 to 175% of average or about one and a half times above average. January and especially February were not just wet, they were very cold. And um, this broke a streak of warm January and February's here for San Diego. Some of our inland areas like Ramona and Big Bear and Vista record cold for February 2019. Those cool months also along with the frequent precipitation led to a significant green up that we're experiencing now in the super bloom. Now while El Nino conditions have developed we can only attribute the atmospheric weather or the jet stream or the rain and snow partially to El Nino but we are seeing the El Nino conditions present and activity resulting from that along the equator. This is the last time since 2011 we've seen a drought free or the D1 or higher in California. Now the reservoirs in SoCal remain below average but statewide they are above average. So we still could see some improvement across Southern California. Snowpack is huge. So what water we can transport into Southern California will occur we're looking at snowpack now about 150% or one and a half times an average year. Uh, it's early spring storms that we are still expecting to see. So we're not over with our winter, even though we're going to see some warm conditions and drier conditions in late March.